Hello, my name is Brian Brewer. I'm the leader of Funding Quest, which is a company I have here in Seattle, Washington, uh, where I work with entrepreneurs and investors and basically help entrepreneurs through the process of raising angel funding. I've been doing this for about 15 years. Uh, I lost track a while back, but I confidently say that I've helped entrepreneurs raise at least $100 million in startup funding. And so, Consequently, I've seen the process uh, for a number of years from, from the perspective both of the entrepreneur and the investor. And so the topic of today's Funding Li uh, Founders Live um, Influencer Series is what do investors look for in a startup? So if you are thinking about uh, attracting investors to invest money in your startup company, then knowing the answer to this question and, and understanding it is crucial to your success. So uh, one of the things I like to do when I, I teach classes as well, um, <clears throat> I have fun. I, I put on my uh, I put on my investor hat. That's what I do sometimes. And this is what if you are an entrepreneur uh, looking for funding, then I recommend you develop this attitude, this mindset of putting yourself in the shoes of the investor, literally putting the investor hat on. And how would they look at you and your company uh, from the investor point of view? So don't worry, I'm not going to wear this during the whole talk here. I might put it on again for effect, but it's kind of fun. So in order to um, get the right framework for this, let's take a moment and review the slide I shared in the, most, in the previous um, influencer series, which was about the startup funding process. And if you look at this slide, it's, uh, there's basically five steps here. Uh, I've simplified this so you can understand the process. Uh, most importantly though, before I go through these five steps briefly, is to understand that raising funding from an investor is a sales process. And, you, and the, if you treat it more like a sales process, you'll have better success. So the first step is to have an investor-ready startup. And I'll go into what that means a little bit later in this uh, uh, video. Then you have to structure a term sheet, which is basically you're pricing your deal or telling what investors are gonna get if they give you money. The third step then is to go out and connect with investors. That's sometimes the hardest part um, for entrepreneurs is finding investors. And I think I'll do another uh, top, I'll, I'll cover that topic sometime soon in the Founders Live series here. Then once you have connected with investors, you give, them, you give your pitch and then close the deal. Now that all sounds very simple and straightforward, but it's a lot of up and down and back and forth involved in that process. But those are the essential steps that you need to understand. So why, so put, again, put that investor hat on and ask yourself, why would an investor uh, give you money? Now I'm talking primarily here about angel investors who are uh, wealthy individuals who don't have any, um, you know, they're not required to make any investment, unlike a VC firm. Uh, they, they invest money because they have extra money to invest and they uh, enjoy doing it and they want to get some return. And so I break down their investor motivations into two categories. There is, number one is financial return, and that's usually the, the most important, uh, but it's not the only uh, motivation. And secondly are emotional payoffs, and we'll talk more about those uh, in a moment. Uh, but just remember that uh, the financial return is the bedrock. The emotional payoff is kind of the icing on the cake, so to speak. I know I'm mixing metaphors there, bedrock and icing on the cake, but you get the idea. So financial return. So in order for an investor to think that he or she is going to get their money back and then maybe some more from your company, they have to believe that, you, that your company is fundable. And what I mean by that is, I'll talk about that in a moment as well, is, is this have, does it have enough of the right stuff in terms of your business model, your product market fit, your market strategy, your management team, and, and so forth? Is enough of the right stuff there so that they can, they can look at this and say, yeah, I think, I think this company's got a chance. You have to get to that sort of first base before you ha anything else makes any sense. So number one is they're looking for a fundable company. Now, there's two other aspects in, in that that I think are most important for what I've seen from investors. Once they realize that, uh, that an investor realizes that you, your company is fundable, yeah, this could work, um, then they look for two other primary things. The, the second one is uh, that a competent team. They want to really know that you and your team members 
um, have have the have the rights, you know, have a enough competence and chutzpah and experience and passion and drive uh, to be able to make this business a success, because they know that most startups fail, and it's the, so they, it's they're taking a bet. So once you can demonstrate that you have a fundable company, the next step is to really show that your team is uh, investment worthy. The third thing that they look for in terms of this fundable company is the deal. And they want to make sure that they're getting a fair deal. They don't want to feel like you have overvalued your company so that they're getting such a small percentage that it won't pay off for them down the road. And secondly, or, or, or con, you know, conversely, investors don't want the, be, the deal to be too generous to them because they know that that will then disincentivize you and the other founders from really putting in uh, 100% into this company to make it a success because they, it has to be a win-win. And so a fair deal, uh, it, there's a lot of been written and said about what makes a fair deal, but roughly speaking for a first round of angel funding, uh, the investors sh post money percentage should be somewhere between 20 and 30 uh, percent plus or minus even beyond that range depending on other factors that's the kind of right proportion that you want to aim for when you're putting a valuation on your company so this, to review that those three things in terms of a fundable company investors are looking for uh, that you have a financial return, that, that you have a fundable company, that you have a competent team, and that it's a fair deal. Now, that's, like I said, that's kind of uh, the, the, the first level you have to get to. Uh, so how do you know whether you're at that level? Well, uh, I mentioned this before, but uh, I created uh, this 20-question survey called the Minimum Fundable Company Test. Uh, it's free, and it's 20 multiple-choice questions. And if you go online and sign up, and answer the questions truthfully, it'll give you an, you'll get a score, you'll get a result that'll give you a pretty good idea of whether or not you're ready to go out and seek funding or not. If your score is below the threshold, then you've got more work to do to create uh, more fundable components in your company. And if you're above that threshold, chances are you're ready to go out and start talking to investors and asking for money. Anyway, uh, check out the minimum fundable company test. It, it covers these five areas, uh, startup viability, business model, market strategy, management, and the deal. Those are the things that uh, investors are looking for. And by the way, in terms of the deal, this is, there's uh, two parts there. It's whether if you, it works for either if you have a high growth company where the investors will get their money uh, from a sale of a company later, or if you have a cash flow business where you expect to pay back cash over time from an investment in your company. So now let's get to the second part of this talk about the emotional payoffs, because this is where this is more the fun part. And this is where having an understanding of what, how it makes investors tick and what are they really looking for can really help you uh, in, in this process, in the sales process of raising angel funding. So I, I view the uh, in, uh, investors emotional payoffs in two categories. The first one is what I call ego satisfaction. Now, yes, investors, we all have egos. We have to have a certain amount of ego to function in our society. Uh, and some people have bigger egos than others. And people that have been successful uh, or at least have access to wealth or, or wealthy uh, tend to have bigger egos. And so it's important for you to understand that and uh, not necessarily flatter or kiss up to investors, but understand what it is that they're looking for. So one of the things that they look for in terms of satisfying their ego for making an investment in a startup company is to have the feeling that they are a savvy investor. In other words, they, they, they'll look at you, you and your deal and your company, and, and, uh, and if they decide to invest in this, they want part of what's behind that is that they want to be seen or they want to feel for themselves that they're smart, that they're making a good choice here, that they're choosing you and it's a good investment, literally. So as you, so you want to, uh, in your negotiations and your discussions with investors, you want to keep that in mind and uh, let, you know, help them develop the sense that, yes, they think this is a good idea and that they will get some satisfaction out of uh, making that decision to invest in your company. Another part of this uh, ego satisfaction is that 
Investor may want to view themselves in the advisor or mentor role to your company. And in many cases, that can be very valuable. So if you, if you, in fact, I recommend that you focus on investors who really can help you with other things in addition to the money. They can help you with contacts. They can help you with advice. They can help you with uh, strategic thinking. Uh, in, any number of things that investors could do to really help you get, you know, once they invest in your company, uh, help, help it uh, accelerate and succeed. So think about those at that aspect. What, so what does an investor get from that? I mean, I mean it's a, often it's a sense that they are giving back to the community at large, so to speak. And, in, and in specific, specifically, they're giving back to you as a part of that community. They want to help you. Uh, they want to be in that advisor or mentor role to help you succeed. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of ego satisfaction in that when uh, everybody has advice and wants to give it. And, in, and hopefully if, um, you'll connect with investors who have good advice and can help you out. The third thing that helps to stroke investors' egos is um, what I would call a belief in your business. And this, is, uh, this comes into play when uh, there's a, some kind of um, personal affinity between the investor's experience or their interests and what your business is doing. So, for example, if you've got, uh, if you're in the tech space and you are, and you've got a, a startup that involves uh, drones, let's say, you know, uh, and if the investor has some experience or affinity for that and is really excited about drones or plays with them themselves or possibly has a background in aviation or aerospace, then they may be very interested in that. And so that's why you want to. You know, you may, as you go out and pitch to investors, you will find plenty of investors who will say no for, and you don't even know what the reasons are, but they'll say no. But often the reason that they'll say no is that they're just not interested in what you're doing. And so, um, the, the adage that I like to share is, uh, raising, uh, angel invest raising angel investing is not about trying to convince skeptics. You're not trying to change anybody's mind here. You really want to go out and find believers because if they believe in your business, then they, you know, they have an affinity for it and they're more motivated to, you know, to do the proper due diligence and perhaps eventually make an investment in your company. Now, the second uh, part of this emotional payoff for, investor, for an investor is what I would call social validation. Now, this means uh, this is going beyond their own ego, but out into the, their network uh, and the community about what kind of um, satisfaction or payoff do they get from being seen as an investor in your business. So one is that they have a network of friends. Uh, many of whom are investors also, and they share deals. And, and they, so this goes back to the idea of wanting to be a savvy investor. If an investor uh, believes that you've got a chance and makes an investment in your company and then uh, has a payoff at the end, uh, gets a return on their investment, then they get bragging rights. They can tell their, their friends or their buddies that, hey, look, uh, I, uh, you know, I made this investment uh, when the other people didn't think it was so smart, and hey, it turned out to pay off really well. Uh, that's, uh, you know, bragging rights, it, it's a big, you know, in some cases, it, it's a big deal. And so be aware that you're being seen as a potential, um, you know, a kind of a, a, a situation where whether or not the investment in your company is a success is going to reflect on the investor and the network of friends that they have. Another part of this social validation is all about you as a CEO. Are you a likable CEO? Um, in fact, um, it's really important uh, to be as likable as possible. In fact, one uh, angel investor who's very active that I know who speaks a lot has publicly said several times that he invests in companies primarily because he likes the CEO. Now, he has to have all those other, you know, the fundability part in place too, but the likability factor is really important as well. And finally, there's this issue about the social impact of your business. Uh, if you have um, um, a business that's going to do some good as well as just make money, then that can be very important to investors as well. And so if that's a part of what your business is about, make sure you play that up as well, because that could be one thing that investors are looking for. And it's part of this emotional uh, 
payoff for investors. I mean, if you don't have any social impact aspect to your business, please don't try to conjure it up or manufacture it because it'll seem uh, pretentious or uh, insincere. But if you do have that, uh, make sure you use, you play that card when possible. So that's a synopsis of what investors are looking for in a startup. But I want to close here with a few comments about what I would, what I would say, uh, why do investors say yes? How do you get them to say yes? And again, it's a, an issue of having, um, paying attention to both the left brain, the rational, and the right brain, the more emotional uh, components of making a decision. So let's take a look here. In terms of the left brain components, uh, investors will say yes because they think your business is fundable. You've done all, you've got enough of the right stuff and you have satisfied their idea of what it takes to be fundable. <clears throat> Secondly, uh, investors say yes because they have the money. Sometimes they simply just don't have the money. You know, they may like your startup, but their cash is tied up in other places and they just are not available to invest. And third, they, uh, they say yes because the price is right. Anytime someone makes a buying decision, and remember, this is a sales process. You're selling something, selling stock in your company or at either outright or at a future date. And anytime somebody says yes, um, they've got to feel good about what they're paying for it. So, so investors need to feel that the price is right, that they're getting a fair deal that we talked about earlier. The second part of an uh, investor saying yes is how they feel. And this is, this is really important. Uh, I've seen entrepreneurs uh, get all the pieces in place but not be able to close the deal because they're missing on one of these points. So the first one is that they have to like the concept. The investor has to like your business and have some affinity and really like what you're doing. Secondly, uh, they need their friends to like it. It's not, it's not likely that an investor is going to go out on a limb and make an investment in a company when their friends are telling them, no, that's a bad deal. That's why there is this herd mentality around angel investors. They talk to each other about deals. That's why it's so important if you can get that first lead investor on board, then oftentimes the money will just flow in because they'll get their friends and other people involved in helping to fund your round. And third, the investor has to like you and trust you. This is just absolutely critical. Uh, it, if they don't like you or they don't trust you, there's no deal that's going to happen. So what do you do? You have to uh, enhance your likability. What can you do in terms of your social skills or your, um, your ability to follow up with things and be on time and do what you're going to say and have, do all those, you know, do all those things that uh, an investor will think, hey, all right, this person, they, they do, I like what they're doing, you know, and I like them as a person as well. Uh, not, sometimes there's not a lot you can do about that in terms of personality clash, but uh, look for investors who will believe in you and like you. And finally, the, the investor needs to trust you. Uh, and this is just bedrock. If you um, do anything that will cause an investor to think that you have some uh, compromised integrity, either about what you say or do or what other people say or about you, then you've lost the game. So uh, your, your reputation is uh, everything in this business. And so I really encourage, just, you know, it sort of goes without saying, but I do want to emphasize it here. Maintain the highest integrity possible. Always be honest and fair in your dealings and it will serve you well. So thank you very much. I think we're going to go now to the, uh, the live chat portion of this. And by the way, if you would like a copy of these slides, just please send me an email at the address on the screen here, brian at uh, funding-quest.com. And a reminder, please, if you haven't done so already, go take the MFC test and see what you get. Thank you very much.